guys, this is Bryce Van Hoosen, and that was the Tone Forge Guilty Pleasure VST from Joey Sturgis Tones. This is another really cool VST from the fine folks over at JST that really nails that kind of EL34 sort of classic rock and roll slash heavy metal sound. Definitely had to bust out some Iron Maiden inspired riffs as well as some Sabotage inspired riffs and a uh, sort of Andy LaRock styled solo to really show this thing off. So let's step over to Reaper, which is my DAW of choice, and I will show you the tones that I dialed in as well as kind of the thought process that I had when I was dialing said tones. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I am here in Reaper. I got my session set up here. So this is... This is my rhythm track. This is what I used for the left, the hard pan left guitar. Uh, it's exactly the same tone setup as the right guitar. Um, so no differences there. So basically coming over to the actual VST here and the GUI interface itself, I have, uh, I kept this one pretty dang simple. So what I have on in the signal path here is the overdrive, of course, because you're not going to have a, a sort of EL34 based um, amp without setting an overdrive in front of it. Uh, then I have the uh, uh, custom impulse response loaded here, uh, and then the parametric EQ just to kind of uh, adjust the low frequencies and the high frequencies just a little bit. Going over to the overdrive, I noticed that this VST is not super duper gainy, which really puts it right in that kind of almost like JCM territory or so. So I had a decent amount of level and gain put onto the overdrive. And then coming over to the actual amp itself, um, I really just kind of dialed this in the same way that I would dial in uh, any of the EL34 based amps that I use that aren't super high gain. So I kind of bump pretty much everything. The middle is, is up considerably. I like mids, I like to cut through. Uh, that's what guitar is good for, right? Then we'll get a little bit of bass to kind of even some of those mid frequencies out and then dialing in the treble so that we have a good amount of cut and then presence, of course, being like the, it's sort of like when you're mastering and you're sort of trying to figure out how much overall top end you want. Dial that in uh, just a little bit past noon here. The gain itself, of course, keeping it kind of more at the one o'clock area just to keep it kind of that nice tight sort of ch -ch -ch kind of kind of sound with the guitar here. The impulse response that I use is actually a uh, Jens Bolgren Sound of God EQ2 from his awesome rhythm guitar tone impulse response. But of course, if you want to use one of the classic JST cabs, which is basically model after a Mesa 412, I would use that with an SM57. That's a really kind of classic tone and uh, something that I like a lot. For me, because I have these uh, impulse responses that I, I really know how to use and kind of how to dial in, I like to use those. So of course no effects on the rhythm guitars and then for the EQ, bumping a little bit of the low frequency or the low mid frequency, pulling back a little bit on the high frequency, and then of course bumping the low and the high frequency as well. So this is um, this is a really nice way to further dial in the sound. Once you get the basis of the rhythm tone sort of set from the amp section, coming over here and kind of tweaking things, just making small adjustments with this parametric EQ is something that I really enjoy doing. And then so next the, uh, the limiter is off for the rhythm track, but we will take a look at the lead track here and see kind of uh, how I made more use of all of the controls for that. Anyway, the rhythm tone by itself. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as you can hear, not super gainy. That's kind of what I, I wasn't trying to go for something that was immensely uh, just sort of balls to the wall gain for this, kind of trying to keep it in that sort of 80s metal territory. And this VST really does a great job of actually sounding like some of the older Marshalls that I really enjoy using. It has that kind of like, I don't know how to describe it other than having sort of that top end kind of blooming sort of sound where if you hit a chord, you can really just kind of hear everything sort of just uh, really defined and sort of just make that kind of blooming, opening up sort of sound. For example, you can kind of hear what I'm talking about like with the beginning of Ozzy's Miracle Man. It has that sort of like opening shimmer kind of thing. Um, and this VST does a really good job of uh, kind of replicating that sound and just really sounding like a kind of a pissed off, hot rotted Marshall that um, you can get right in your VST without having to uh, get some kind of crazy 80s modded Marshall or what have you, so. Yeah, love that sound. All right, let's come over to the lead here. So for the solo, I was looking to basically, I kind of wanted to do something that was very mid, mid heavy sounding and something that really kind of cut through and could make its way through the wall of instruments and sort of sit on top of everything. For this, uh, left the gain probably about normal. The bass rolled back on that. The mids I pumped up considerably. Um, the mid range on this VST is, is awesome. It doesn't sound too honky or telephony. It just really kind of cuts through and makes its presence known. Uh, so then trouble, probably about the same as where it was on the rhythm and then presence up a little bit more, as well as getting a little bit of that simulated sort of output gain as well. And then with the overdrive, I crank the level and uh, the tone a little bit as well, just to get a little bit extra cut. For this, I am using the Jens Bogren Rhythm, or not Rhythm, sorry, Lead rather. I'm using the Lead IR pack from him. And then this is the Valo Virtuous IR, which pairs really nicely with the, uh, the Sound of God uh, series. So I think that they're based off of the same cabinets and the same uh, speaker combination as well. So, all right. And then coming to the effects section, which had honestly more effects than I was expecting. I definitely was not expecting there to be a wah in there. I didn't make use of that, but that's a really cool feature to have if you want just a little bit of that kind of cocked wah sort of sound going on here. Um, it also has an added distortion feature as well. So if you're looking for even more gain, the, the wah is uh, a nice one to have. So, but of course I'm going to be using delay because, uh, for lead guitar, I have to have delay. So setting the delay time up cause I like kind of a long delay, the repeats down a little bit and the delay level is down a little bit because this delay is very, it's very clean. It's coming back almost like I feel like you could make a really cool sort of like dotted eighth kind of sound with this. It's just like a, a super, super exact replica of the note that you actually just played. But then we get the JST space verb, which is awesome. Um, so I have this set down a little bit for the blend in the amount and the reverb I'm going with the hall and it really makes it sound like you're <laughs> adding a lot of natural space to the sound. It, it honestly sounds like it's just a uh, kind of further mic'd cabinet. So it's a really natural sounding reverb that just sits around the notes very nicely. EQ here, of course, I'm gonna be bumping the mid frequencies up just a little bit for each of these, both the low, the mid mid and the high mids, all getting a significant bump here. The highs as well. And for the actual sound on the middle frequency, I took it down to 708 hertz. Just kind of sweeping it while I was playing along and, and sort of mixing it, made it sound, kind of made it sit a little bit 
better. All right, and then using this limiter here, it's uh, pretty cool that you can see kind of where your output is at and kind of if you're maxing out sort of the, the VST itself. So if you're getting a little bit too in red because you have, you know, too much gain, too many effects, too much whatever going on, uh, you can kind of just back this down and play around with this a little bit. So I found a good threshold setting and adjusted the output accordingly and uh, was able to get a really overdriven kind of kind of raunchy sort of guitar sound, but backing off a little bit just so it sounds a little more clean. So hearing the final product of that, this is what that sounds like. <laughs> And you can hear how dialing in both the delay and the reverb there just made for an absolutely massive sounding solo. Really like the way that that turned out. This is a really cool, very versatile, just great sounding VST. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and check out the Tone Forge Guilty Pleasure VST from Joey Sturgis Tones. But links in the description below, so check it out. All right, I'll catch you next time.